Family Theater presents Dorothy McGuire and Charles Boyer. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Flight to Bermuda, starring Dorothy McGuire. And now, here is your host, Charles Boyer. Thank you, Tonita Frano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Fly to Bermuda, starring Dorothy Maguire, as Joe. Why, sure. Sure, hold the wire. Just a moment, please. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, worth ten cents a word. Um, hello? Send us a night letter, that'll be a dollar twenty. Not at all. Thank you. Anything else to go out, Miss Addison? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, there's one coming in on the tape now. Delivery? Oh, uh, Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, 416 Wentworth. Those two messages you have are down near 8th, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Channel Place and Cosgrove. Or you can pick this one up on your way back. Okay. You feeling all right, Miss Addison? Hmm? You look kind of tired. Oh, I guess I am a little tired, Barry. Tired of the night shift. And this town. And things in general. You know what you ought to do, Miss Addison? What's that? Get married. <laughs> I'll pass the word. No kidding. I bet there's lots of guys you could marry. Not in Finchville. I've conducted a survey. And you ought to get out of this town. But if you went to some place like Chicago or New York, you'd have to beat them off with a stick. Mm, that'll be the day. No kidding. You look kind of pretty when you get all fixed up. Well, thank you. Well, you know what I mean. Only in Finchville could a girl get a compliment like that. Well, I mean it. I know, Barry. And thanks. Really. I guess I didn't say it very well. On the contrary, that's the nicest thing that's been said to me by a male over 17 in the last two months. I'm only 16. Oh, I knew there'd be a hitch to it. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry, Miss Ellison. Oh, forget it. Here, you better get started on those deliveries. Yeah, I, I guess I'd better. Well, I'll be back about 15 minutes. Okay. And, uh, Miss Addison. Yes, Barry? I'll be 17 in November. Happy birthday. Yeah, see ya. Well, I guess I'd better paste up that other message. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, 416 Wentworth. Congratulations. This is to notify you, you have won Sweet Tooth Syrup Slogan Contest. Please contact Midwestern Travel Agent, Mr. Charles Morris, Chicago, for flight to Bermuda, plus accommodations, two-week vacation. Ah, oh, how do you like that? Two weeks in Bermuda, just for winning a slogan contest. Two weeks away from Finchville. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin. Mrs.? What's a Mrs. winning a thing like this for? Should be a Miss. A Miss. A Miss Joe Addison, for instance. Not a Mrs. Ann McLaughlin, whoever that is. Or Mrs. Anybody. Husband probably won't let her go alone anyhow. Mrs. Ann McLaughlin. And she doesn't even know she won it yet. Nobody knows. But Miss Jo Addison. Mrs. McLaughlin! Mrs. McLaughlin! What? Oh, oh, 
Mr. Morris. Oh, what's the matter? Are you so excited you've forgotten your own name? Oh, no, I... Uh, well, the aeroplane was making so much noise, <laughs> I... Well, of course. All set to get aboard? You got everything? Oh, Tickets? Y- yes. Oh, yes. It's too bad your husband couldn't have come up here to Chicago to see you often. Oh, yes. Well, uh, he's so busy. He's going to be a lonely man these next two weeks. Well, yes, but uh, he told me to have a good time. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will. Incidentally, about your purse. Oh, my purse. Oh, I- I'd almost forgot. I notified the railroad that you think you left it on the train. Oh, uh, you needn't have gone to all that bother. No bother at all, Miss McLaughlin. <laughs> I know what it's like to lose all your identification. Uh, I had my wallet stolen about two years ago. Oh, I know very well what it's like. Oh, I'm sure it'll turn up. Well, let's hope so. It's lucky for you we had that telegram in your suitcase. <laughs> Otherwise, we never would have known who you were. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I told the railroad that you bought your ticket for Chicago at Finchville. You did? Yes. They'll trace it down, Mrs. McLaughlin. Now, don't you worry. Oh, but I, I don't want them to uh, uh, make such a fuss. No fuss, I assure you, Miss McLaughlin. They might just find that you left your purse on your dining room table oh, back in Finchville. No. Uh, no, I didn't. No, don't you worry. Oh, look, look, look. They're rolling the passenger liner up oh. your plane. You better get aboard. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and uh, I'd just as soon you forgot about the purse. Oh, forget it. Yes, I, I don't want my husband to worry. Ah, now you put this entirely out of your mind, Mrs. McLaughlin. Well, I'll I... send a wire to your husband explaining what happened. Oh, no, no, you, you mustn't. I'll write him. Oh, it won't be any trouble at all. No, just... my husband, you, you see, uh, wires, they upset him terribly. I'll write. Well, just as you wish, Mrs. McLaughlin, now don't you forget, just get on board the plane there and have a wonderful time oh, in Bermuda. Oh, yes, <laughs> wonderful. And thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Uh, Morris, Morris. Oh, your name is McLaughlin. Oh, yes, that's true. Well, Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't you worry, Miss McLaughlin. We'll find your purse. Uh, pardon me. Oh, I, yes. Uh, well, you probably don't remember me, but... Uh, I was on the plane from New York with you. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> and I noticed you weren't dancing, so I thought maybe, well, since we're both staying here at the same hotel in Bermuda, I thought I might as well introduce myself. Oh, yes. Well, um, I've seen you around. <laughs> My name's Stan. Stan Johnson. Oh, well, how do you do? I'm Joe. Uh, Anne McLaughlin. Uh, Joanne? No, no. <laughs> That's my father's name. Joe. Uh, not not Joanne. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my name's Anne, but we both have the same last name. Uh, McLaughlin. <laughs> my father. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that's what got you so mixed up. I understand. Oh, isn't it beautiful down here, Mr. Stanson? Uh, Johnson? Uh, Johnson. Stan uh, Johnson. How do you do? <laughs> oh, my. Uh, anything wrong, oh, Mr. McLaughlin? No, uh, I'm just so, so excited to be here in Bermuda uh, at last. <laughs> Is this your first trip? Yes. Oh, and isn't it just the most beautiful place in the whole world? I think it is at that. Oh, I suppose you vacation here lots. Oh, uh, well, I I come here pretty regularly, oh. but uh, not exactly for a vacation. I'm a salesman for a hotel supply house. Oh, that must be wonderful. Uh, to travel, I mean, all over the place, isn't it? Well, uh, sometimes it... Uh... You get wishing there were some place you could settle down, you know, permanently. Oh, no. If I had the chance, I'd travel and travel. I'd go to Paris and London and Rome. And Finchville? What do you know about Finchville? (laughs) Well, I, I wanted to find out your name, so I sneaked to look at the hotel register when we got here this morning. Oh, I see. (laughs) That was very naughty of you, Uh, Mr. Johnson. uh, Yeah, I I guess it wasn't that, but, well, I was interested. Uh, Well, I'll forgive you this time. (laughs) Oh, incidentally, you'll be amused to know it. It looked like you signed your name... Mrs. McLaughlin. Oh, oh, it did? Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, did it look like that? Oh, but I see you're not oh. wearing a wedding ring. Oh, no, 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 no. I never wear one. I mean, well, not being married, of course, I never... <laughs> That's what I meant. I, I guess your hand must have slipped. When was that? Uh, when you were signing your name. On the register. On the register? When I was signing my name? Oh, of course, I see. Oh, well, that's exactly what happened. You see, my uh, hand slipped when, and it made the look uh, the missus look like a miss. <laughs> I figured it was something like that. Oh, silly thing to do. Those, those pens are terrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, since you are a miss... Oh, yes, I am. My handwriting's not very good, anyhow. Uh, and since all that pretty music is going on out there, I... I I wondered if you'd like to dance. Why? Miss? Yes. I I'd love to. <laughs> uh, 
what are you thinking about, honey? Hmm? You've hardly said anything all afternoon. Oh, I was thinking that tomorrow it's back to Finchfield. Ah, but only for a little while, Anne, as soon as my transfer comes through. Oh, Stan, I don't think we, we ought to make such definite plans. Hey, what goes on here? Let's just enjoy the buggy ride and not think too far ahead. <laughs> In the first place, darling, this is a Landau, not a buggy, and our driver would be insulted if he heard you call it that. Well, I was speaking figuratively. And in the second place, I love you. Well, how can you be sure of that? You hardly know me. I know all I want to know. Oh, Stan, I've, I've had a wonderful time. It's been the two happiest weeks I've ever spent, but, but I... But nothing. I love you, I want to marry you. Now, what's complicated about that? But you don't know anything about me. What's to know? <laughs> you got a dark secret in your past, Miss McLaughlin? My name I is... I know. It's Anne. I was just kidding. Well, how do you know I, I don't have a dark secret or something? You don't know. Sure. You're a hunted criminal, probably traveling under an alien. And what if I were? Oh, honey. Oh, would you still want to marry me? Would you, Stan? If what? If I were a criminal, a, a thief. Honey, what's eating you? Answer me. Good grief. You want a slogan contest, get a two-week vacation, meet a guy who falls in love with you, and when he proposes, you want to know would he marry a criminal. Well, would you? Are you a criminal? Well, no. Of course not. So why the crazy questions? Good grief. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you that you don't know everything about me. Well, you don't know anything about me. I could be Jack the Ripper. Oh, that's nonsense. I could be Jack the Ripper. <laughs> I know all about you. Everybody in Hamilton knows about you. All right, so what do you know? I, I sell towels. Well, that's more than you know about me. You come from Finchville. You don't know where I work. All right, where do you work? In... A department store. Ah, the secret is out. You work in a department now, store. Now, don't be snide. Honey, what's this all about? What are you trying to tell me? It's just that... Oh. Oh. Is there someone else? Oh, no. No, if no, If there no, is, no. you don't have to let me down easy. Oh, there isn't, Stan, really. If there is, tell me. Because the one thing I can't stand is being lied to. You... You can't stand that? It's insulting, degrading, and pointless. But but sometimes it's it's almost necessary. It's never necessary. No matter how unpleasant the truth is, it's a thousand times better than a lie. But sometimes it can be very hard to tell the truth. Only liars find it hard to tell the truth. Excuse me, dear, but this is a very big thing with me. I can see that it is. So, please, Anne. The truth. Is there anyone else? No. No, Stan. There isn't. And that's the truth. Well, then it's settled. We'll get married next month in Finchville as soon as my transfer to the Midwest comes through. But, Stan... No, 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 that's all. This is going to be our last night together for some time, so let's not spoil it arguing. Oh, huh? I, I won't, As Stan. soon as we get to the hotel, you run upstairs and get dressed for dinner. <gasps> Oh, Stan. <laughs> I'll meet you in the lobby at 6.30. I've reserved a table at the Ace of Spades for tonight, and I've got a little something I picked up in town this afternoon that I... <laughs> I want you to wear on that finger. <laughs> Boy, take those bags up to 714. Here's the key. Uh, excuse me, Jim. Yes? Oh, Mr. Johnson. Dining in tonight? Uh, no. And I probably won't be back to the hotel until much before midnight, so I thought I'd leave word in case any messages came in. Very well. Uh, we'll be at the Ace of Spades. We? Oui. Uh, yes, uh, Miss McLaughlin and I. Very well. Mr. Johnson, Ace of Spades. Any time before midnight. <laughs> And uh, you'd like any calls put through there? Well, not just any, but if a call comes in from my New York office, especially if it's my boss, Mr. Leitner... Call from New York, Mr. Leitner. That I would like put through. Put through to Ace of Spades. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to get the company to transfer me back to the States. Don't tell me we're going to lose you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> well, if you do, your loss will be my gain. I'm, uh... I'm planning on getting married. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Uh, Who's the lucky girl? The, uh, the uh, lady I'm taking to dinner tonight, Miss McLaughlin. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> is, is she a widow? Uh, who? Mrs. McLaughlin. 
Oh, no, no, no. I know what you're thinking of. It's Miss McLaughlin. When she signed the register, her arm slipped. I beg pardon. It's Miss McLaughlin, not Mrs. She isn't married. But there's a message, a phone call that came in from the airport this afternoon for her. And what of it? It was for Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin from Mr. Morse. He just got off the plane. But it can't be Mrs. I took the message myself. Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin of Finchville. From whom? And Mr. Morris. Something to do with the slogan contest she won. He called from the airport about 4.30. Seemed very excited about something, but I couldn't reach her. Mrs. Joseph McLaughlin? Yes. I just phoned the message up to her room now. She seemed to know who he was. Where... Where is this guy Morris? Has he been here? No, but he reserved a room. Said he'd be here as soon as he got through customs. Mrs.? I expect he should arrive any minute now. She... She lied. She lied to me. Is, is anything wrong, Mr. Johnson? Don't say there's something wrong. What's Mrs. McLaughlin's room number? Why, 302? 302, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes? It's me. Oh, Stan. Yeah? Oh, Stan, I was just going to call down to the lobby. So Joe McLaughlin is your father's oh, name, Oh, no, huh? no, Stan. That's what I wanted to tell you. I'll bet. What are you doing? Packing? Yes, I... I've got to leave. Listen, Stan, I can't explain now, but I'm in trouble, real trouble. I'll say you're in trouble. You had a lot of fun stringing me along, didn't oh, you? Oh, Stan, I wasn't stringing you along, Don't really. Don't give me any more hokum. The desk clerk just told me all about that phone call you got from Morris this the... afternoon. You... no. You bet I know. He was right there on the message... You mean everything? Enough to figure out the rest of it. So oh. Joe McLaughlin's your father, Oh, no, huh? of course he's not my father. At last you admit it. Oh. Nice trick to play on a guy. Oh, I didn't mean to trick you, Stan. Well, what about McLaughlin? Oh, McLaughlin doesn't mean anything to me. We're strangers. Ah, yes, strangers. The misunderstood wife. It's always the woman who pays. Well, it is. And it's the woman you ought to feel sorry for in this case. After this, I should feel sorry? Especially after this. What are things to lose, all this, this color and gaiety? After what you've done, that's the only regret you have? Absolutely. The only uh, one. Uh, 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 of all the cold blood... What about McLaughlin and the kids? Well, what about them? They didn't think up the slogan. They didn't think up the... Then they're... Our kids? Three of them. Three? Or four, I'm not sure which. You're not sure which? I can never remember things like that. Besides, they had nothing to do with it. Never... Never in my life have I met such a stone-hearted woman. Oh, Stan. And I think I proposed I wanted to marry you. I even bought the ring. Oh, Stan. Stan. Isn't there any chance for us? What do you think I am? Oh, I'll probably have to go back and pay for what I've done. I should hope so. Oh, but it won't last forever. It won't? Well, it's supposed to. You mean for life? Of course for life. Oh, but it's so unfair for just one mistake. Mistake? Don't tell me you didn't know what you were getting into when you decided to become Mrs. McLaughlin. Well, yes, in a way, but it, it was just on the spur of the moment. Uh, I can believe that. And only for two weeks. Two weeks? Well, isn't that the usual time for things like this? Not where I come from. Well, two weeks was plenty for me. I can't believe it. I can't believe you'd do such a thing. Well, I couldn't resist. It was free, all expenses paid. And that was all it meant to you? That and a chance to get out of Finchville for a while. Well, all I can say is I'm glad I found you out before it was too late to do such a thing like that just to get out of Finchville for two weeks. I can see you've never been to Finchville. No, no, and I never will be. Much as I pity him, I have no intention of giving McLaughlin a chance to blow my head off. Blow your head off? You must think he takes things like this awfully hard. Most husbands do. Oh, he won't give it a second thought. I'm the one he'll be peeved with. Peeved? Well, if he thinks about it at all. What? What kind of a man is he? I understand he's not considered very special in Finchville. But to think... To think I wanted to marry you. Well, I must say, it didn't take much to change your mind. Much? Come in. You can say much. Oh, if it isn't Mrs. Oh. McLaughlin. Oh, uh, Mr. Morris. Uh, who's this? I was just going. Yes, are you part of this little intrigue, sir? Oh. I take it you represent the plaintiff. I most certainly do. We have been deceived, defrauded, and held up to public ridicule. Believe ah. me, Mr. Morris, Mr. Johnson had nothing whatsoever to do with this. No heroics, we thank you. We never have even met. Until we came to Bermuda. Is that true, Mr. Johnson? Oh, well, yes, but I... Oh, and she misrepresented herself to you. She did to the management of this hotel. Yes. She certainly did. Well, very well, then. I shan't detain you any longer. If, however, my client should want your cooperating testimony in this matter, would you be kind enough to come forward? 
Of course. Here's my card. Uh, thank you. Stan! Don't even speak to me. But... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I hope you get everything you deserve and more. But Stan, don't you feel sorry for me? The only person I feel sorry for in this whole mess is Joe McLaughlin, your husband. My husband? Stay where you are, young but lady. But Joe McLaughlin's not my husband. Don't I know it? That was it. Stan thought I was Mrs. McLaughlin. That was why I was so furious. And then I take it you know why the board of the Sweet Tooth Syrup Company oh. is equally furious? Oh, yes, of course. But you must let me tell him I'm not married. Stan! <laughs> you can tell him after you get through serving your uh, prison sentence. Prison sentence? I understand that's a customary penalty for grand theft. But all I wanted was a little vacation. Oh, uh, and you'll get one, I promise you. <gasps> At the state's expense, and Miss Addison. Can't you just let me find him and tell him how wrong he was? He thinks I'm married. Maybe he'd wait for me. Oh, maybe he'll wait for me. A clean-cut young man. Like, wait for a jailbird? But he said he loved me. It wasn't you he loved, Miss Addison. It was. No, it was the sweet, honest girl you pretended to be. That's what he fell in love with. But if you just let me go after him and tell I'm him... I'm sorry, Miss Addison. I'm going to have to turn you over to the police. If, if I hadn't been so anxious to get out of Finchville... This never would have happened, would it? Well, perhaps. Mind if I use your phone? No. <clears throat> a desk? I'd like to send a wire, please. Uh, yes, I'll wait. Finchville mm. isn't really such a bad town. Beg your pardon? Finchville. It, it, it's really quite nice. Not very big, but the people there are friendly. Yes, well, I've never been there myself. I... I've lived there all my life. Went to grammar school there, high school. Yeah. Worked in a department store. And then I got a job in the telegraph office. Just a month ago. Yeah, but, but so I understand. Do, I... do you know why I got a job in the telegraph office? Well, I, I can't imagine. Operator! Uh, a, a young lady. Yeah, I'd like to send a wire. I got a job mm. in the telegraph office mm. because a young man from out of town opened up an electrical repair shop next door. Mm. That's why. Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't even know his name. Mm. But he seemed very nice. And I thought I might meet him if he ever came in to send a telegram. But he never did. Yeah, but, but I operate... I'd like to send a wire to Mrs. Anne McLaughlin. Mrs. Anne McLaughlin. 416 Wentworth. Uh, young lady. Finchville. Uh, young lady, I, I'd, I'd like to send a wire. Hmm? Mm. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, I'd like to send a wire, if you don't mind. Hey, Joe, you got a customer. Get with it. Mm. Barry... Did you deliver those messages already? Yeah, I thought you were going to paste up that other one while I was gone. Well, I, uh... You've been I sitting you... there all this time? Uh, yes, I must have been. Oh, oh excuse me, sir. I, I, I didn't hear oh, you. Oh, no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> the way you were staring at it, I, I figured that must be quite a message. Yes, uh, a lady right here in town just won a trip to Bermuda. A uh, Mrs. McLaughlin. No kidding? Mm hmm Is that the McLaughlins over on Wentworth Street? Yes, 416 Wentworth. Well, you, know. you know them? Well, not very well. I I just did a little work for them on their television set, oh. new picture tube. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got the repair shop next door. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe, will you pace that thing up? Oh, oh, yes, yes, right away. I ought to get rich delivering a message like that. Um, I I'll just be a moment. Okay. If you don't mind waiting, Mr. Uh... No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Uh, Thomas, Joe, Joe Thomas. I, I just have to paste this and then... Joe Thomas? Yeah, why? Oh, uh, why, that's... That's my first name, too. Josephine. I, uh, uh, well, I just have to fold it up like this and put it in the envelope and uh, that's it. Can I have it, huh? Oh, oh yes, Barry, here. Thanks. Well, see you around, folks. They give me more than a buck, I'll buy ice cream for the house. Okay, and if they don't, I'll buy it. <laughs> he's... He's a real good kid. Yes. Yes, he's swell. You, oh, you wanted to send a wire? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. A straight wire or, or a night letter? Uh, well, I, I guess a night letter will do it. To whom? Uh, to, to my mother. Mrs. Thomas? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, tomorrow's her birthday, and I, oh. uh, I, I can't lie very well, I, I just wanted to meet you, and I, I'm new in Finchville, and I, I, I know, and I, I figured to settle down here, but I don't know anybody, I mean, I don't know any girls, so, I, I know most of them, I, I could introduce you, well, to tell the truth, I, I've met all of them I want her right now, 
At least I think I have. Josephine. Everybody calls me Joe. That's what everybody calls me, too. It, <laughs> it's going to get a little confusing. Oh, confusing? Oh, I mean, two Joes, you know. If oh. we go out together or anything like that, to a movie. Do you like movies? Oh, yes. Well, I, I noticed there's one. Well, there's only one here in town, but they, they change the picture every two days. Yes, and it's, it's always a double feature, anyhow. Yeah, you always see two for one at a double feature. <laughs> you know, Finchville's going to go crazy with this. Huh? What's that? Two Joes at a double feature. They'll go crazy. This is Charles Boyer again. United we stand... Divided we fall is a very fitting motto for a great state, but it is even more fitting for a family because the family is the foundation upon which the enduring state is built. The moment a state or a nation becomes torn with internal strife and dissension, its fall is close at hand, and so it is with the family. But the family that unites in prayer need have no fear of such calamities, for prayer is man's means of communicating with God. And he answers these prayers with his blessings of understanding and unison to the family that prays to him. The successful, the happy, and the lasting state, therefore, is the state which is composed of such families united in prayer. So let's remember then that unity maintains enduring peace and harmony in our nation and that the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed Flight to Bermuda, starring Dorothy McGuire. Charles Boyer was your host. Others in our cast were John Stevenson, Howard McNear, Jeffrey Silver, and Jim Nusser. The script was written and directed for Family Theater by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when family theater will present Gustafson starring Frank Lovejoy. Joan Leslie will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.